Ron recently introduced the Nucleus One server at an attractive price of $499, which is a lot cheaper than the previous Nucleus models. But how does it perform? Well, you'd be surprised. I was. If there's one thing that would help potential room buyers to cross the bridge, it's an affordable, ready to use, stable server that functions like a consumer product instead of a computer. Of course, there is a nucleus, but that's 1850 euros. The new Nucleus 1 comes at $499, converted to euros and VAT added it will be 550 euros. That sets expectations. Let's be real, it's about the price of a NUC i3 with 4GB of DDR4 RAM and 128GB M.2 SSD. But the Nucleus has a custom housing that makes it silent. When I asked Rune what processor was used, CEO Enno van der Meer answered, As always we are not talking about processor specifics, primarily because we don't think the conversation should be focused on that. Now that's an answer that could mean they effectively like to hide what's inside. But van der Meer continues, Someone out there has done a teardown and discovered that it's a quad-core Celeron, but the interesting detail is that this one is a very different animal from the Celerons of just a few years ago. Another reason we avoid the specifics is that we now are able to manufacture at lower cost and higher volume. We expect to be more agile about using the latest greatest available silicon, so the processor specification is unlikely to remain fixed for very long. It would be unfortunate to have information out there that ends up being out of date. About the performance, he said, the performance is really good. I'd say it benchmarks right around the second generation nucleus. So now it's up to me to test the performance. But let's see first where the nucleus one is to be used. You can see the chapters in the timeline. Feel free to skip the subjects you already know. Let me start saying that the nucleus one server, as all room servers, comes without a subscription to the room services and that it won't work without. Having a subscription lets you index your music on a shared volume on a NAS or computer, an internal drive, a USB drive and or music on the streaming services Tidal and Cobus. From these streaming services you can select music that gets integrated in your music database with your own music. So if you search for Beyoncé you'll find all albums even though you only bought Lemonade. Of course, only when you have a subscription to Cobus or Tidal too. You can then add, for instance, Texas Hold'em to your database so when you scroll through your albums you see it too. And when you click it, it will stream from either Tidal or Cobus depending on your subscription. You can rip CDs using Room by adding a USB optical drive to the server and inserting the CD. The ripping can be checked on the HTML page of the server and after the rip is completed it is stored in a CD rip folder on the server. And although the album is labelled correctly in Rune, the files themselves are not named accordingly. Of course, some more obscure albums might not get recognised, but this is easily corrected by hand by a program like JCOS, Jade, Music Brains and the like. Also, music files you have ripped earlier are automatically labelled correctly in Rune or, if you prefer, Rune uses the metadata you already added. A year ago Rune introduced Arc, which is an app for your smartphone that lets you play music from the Rune server while on the road. See the video Rune Labs Arc has grown up I made last February. You might also watch Rune version 1.8 fresh and fast to get more info on Rune. We are at version 2.0 now, but the video gives a good impression on what's possible. Links at the usual places. Time to look at the hardware. 
the Nucleus One has to be connected through your home network to the internet to check your room subscription and download metadata, access Tidal or Cobus provided you are subscribed and play internet radio stations. Over the home network you can access a shared volume holding music on either your computer or NAS. You can connect the Nucleus One to your stereo over a digital to analog converter, DAC for short, using a USB cable. That DAC can be a separate device like here, connected to an amp and speakers. Music is selected using a smartphone, tablet or computer running a Rune Remote app. Alternatively, the DAC might be integrated in your amp or AV receiver having a USB input. Usually you can yield a higher sound quality when you connect the server to the stereo using the network. One way is to use a Rune Ready network bridge which essentially is digital output away from the server and optimized for music reproduction. You then need a DAC connected to the amp unless the amp has an integrated DAC. Or you can use a Rune Ready network player, also known as a streamer, with integrated DAC. And all in one streaming amplifiers become so popular you could go for one of those. They combine a streamer, DAC and amplifier in one and today there are a lot of room certified models available. Up till now I looked at the Nucleus One as a source for one stereo, but it can feed your entire house with music if you like. Your children can each have their playback over PC speakers connected to their laptop, their smartphone, your old squeeze box or Sonos speakers or over AirPlay compatible player. Same goes for your garage, study, master bedroom and so on. How many endpoints, as Rune calls them, can be served depends on other uses like EQ and sample rate conversion you use. I could easily provide 9 endpoints, rooms if you like, with different music, 5 streams from the hard disk and 4 from Tridal. And I'm sure it could even do more. And for those with a Cobus or Tidal account, you can stream to all rooms using just one account. The Room Musa engine lets you do headroom management, see my video, improve the sound quality of your DAC for free and more on the minus 3 dB trick for more on reducing the chance of clipping. It's also a sample rate converter. By upsampling in Room you make it easier for the reconstruction filter in your DAC to sound good. If your DAC works better with DSD, Rune can convert PCM to DSD, or the reverse if that sounds better on your DAC. Several conversion filters can be set. For headphone listeners there is a cross field option that makes headphones listening more like listening to loudspeakers. There is an excellent parametric equalizer that lets you set gain, frequency and Q factor that defines the frequency range the filter works on. The Nucleus One is built in a metal inner housing that is mounted in a molded polycarbonate outer housing. It measures 240 by 240 by 55 mm and weighs 2 kilos. The front only shows the embossed wound logo. Along the sides we see what looks like cooling profiles, which they are not. On the top we see a grill that is inspired on the Nucleus Titan, but here it has no function other than cosmetic. On the rear we see the power input where the 19 volts DC 65 watts AC adapter is to be connected. Then the HDMI output that outputs stereo and multi-channel audio, so no video. The network is to be connected here. Since it's a server it has no Wi-Fi for that would not have been reliable enough. But since the server can be placed anywhere in the house except for when you use the HDMI or USB outputs. That should normally not be a problem. There are two USB 3 outputs that accept USB A connectors. Here USB drives or a DAC can be connected. A power button with light ring finalizes the tour on the rear. Inside we see a small motherboard that holds the new generation quad core Celeron processor. A small fan provides cooling but during the test it was never heard. 
not even when I used a ridiculous amount of DSB functions. In front of the motherboard is a 2.5 inch drive tray, where the user opening the lid in the bottom can mount a SATA hard disk or SSD. I mounted an 8 terabyte Samsung 870 EVO SSD drive. I tested the Nucleus One by using it instead of the Intel NOC 10i7 FNH that runs RuneRock on a 128GB M.2 SSD drive and has the music stored on an internal 8 terabyte Samsung 870 EVO SSD drive. The same SSD was used in the Nucleus One. I have used several streamers running as Rune Endpoint but did listening mainly on my setup one where it was connected to the Zixel GS1900-10HP switch over a CAT6 patch cable. The amplifier was the Air Acoustics AX520 connected to a pair of PMC Fact12 signature loudspeakers on Stack Audio over 70 isolators and connected over AudioQuest Robinhood Zero loudspeaker cable. The Grim Audio Mu2 network player was used as Rune Endpoint and was connected to the amp over Grim Audio SQM XLR cables. The connection to the Zixel switch was over a Network Acoustics Neuron Pro Ethernet filter. Rune was controlled using an iPad Pro 2 running the Rune app. As I said, I mounted the 8TB SSD internally and after starting up the installation wizard was automatically run. Here I could add additional storage on a NAS or computer, which I didn't, and enter my subscription to Tidal and Cobus. I started uploading music and subsequently Rune started to index the music on the SSD and then analyze the metadata and loudness of every album and track. Remarkably I could play music right from the start while indexing was at full speed. Only twice did the music stop. My Intel NOC i7 did not do better. Rune says that the Nucleus One is suited for up to 10,000 albums or 100,000 tracks. This of course is a rough estimate. With pop and rock the average number of tracks on an album will generally be higher than with classical. When I had copied all my tracks to the Nucleus One, Rune showed 9,744 albums holding 138,287 tracks. I expected it to be slow and show hiccups, as was the case using a NUC i3, or actually worse since it uses a Celeron processor. But look at how simple it all works. Let's go to albums and search for Sgt. Pepper. Almost instant. Let's look at the album description. This is one from the Dutch Wikipedia. There is a link to Paul McCartney, let's click that and browse the album. Ok, a tad slow for Rune, but still very usable. Let's go to co-writer Lennon. The Dutch bio pops up immediately. as does the English Wikipedia version. Let's go back to Albums and start Focus. Here you can make all kinds of selections, but let's go for the performer Jim Keltner and almost instantly it shows the albums Keltner has played drums on. I see that I have two copies of Carly Simon's No Secret. Let's combine these as two versions of the same album, selecting them, select Edit and select Group Alternative Versions. Easy peasy. This is not what you could have been expected from a seller on a few years ago. The recent update of Rune Server Software version 2.0 built 1392 has given a sound quality update. Even more relaxation, better in microdynamics and so on. Nothing over dramatic but it's always good to have. Between the Intel NUC i7 and the Nucleus One using the same update I could not hear any difference. I used none of the DSP functions since in my setup 1A this gives the best sound quality. For those that have a normal size music collection 
this obviously is a good choice for you. It has more than sufficient power to serve you, is really plug and play and is at the right price point. For me it was interesting to see how well this Celeron based Rune server works. Don't forget that once Rune specified an Intel i3 as minimum. Interpreting Rune's outings, it is a combination of speed of the recent Celerons and the fact that you can do a lot when you control both the hardware and the software. The Nucleus One appears to be rather fast and capable of handling rather large collections. I should mention here that, like with Rune Rock on a Intel NUC, the updates are announced in the user interface. Simply click on the announcement and the update is installed. That's even easier than with some consumer electronics devices. Add that up to the pre-installed Rune server software. The fact that a dealer now can sell you an affordable Rune server and the fact that Rune is the best music playing software, at least to me anyway. It might be clear they have a big hit at their hands. And on that bombshell we come to the end of this video. Next week at Friday 5 pm Central European time there will be a new video again. If you don't want to miss that, subscribe to this channel or follow me on Patreon, Facebook, LinkedIn or Instagram so you will be informed when new videos are out. Help me reach even more people by giving this video a thumb up or link to this video on the social media. It is much appreciated. Many thanks to those viewers that support this channel financially. It keeps me independent and lets me improve the channel further. If that makes you feel like supporting my work too, the links are in the comments below this video on YouTube. I'm Hans Beekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you next week. And whatever you do, enjoy the music.